Mojave gives you every weather condition that you could think of. It's a very challenging environment. As we go out and do test days, and we go down a fairly bumpy dirt road to the test area here at the Mojave Spaceport to test site number five, which is on the far side of the runway. The day of test setup on the bunker, we get to kind of unveil the engine uh, because of all of the wind in Mojave. And it's about three, four hours of test setup for two seconds of actual testing. And it's always really rewarding to see the rocket fire. My name is Sarah and I work for Maston. I've been here about a year. I do a lot of work on the small business innovative research projects for Maston. I shoot stuff with rockets and it's a great time. My name is Matthew Coons. I'm VP R&D here at Maston Space Systems, and I work on a lot of our technology development programs and a bit on the lunar side as well. We are thrilled and excited to be able to help out with the NASA Artemis program and doing some of these technology demonstrations to safely get astronauts back to the moon. What we're doing today is testing out different thrust levels. So different pressures on the samples, different temperatures, and we'll be testing a sample for landing pad development. So we're going to see how well they do under the plume environment, under various thrust levels. And uh, this is a precursor to one day hopefully deploying them on the moon. The goal of what we're doing with the Artemis missions is to test different coupons for potential landing pads in the future. Coupons are a meter by a meter, any kind of material. So we've gotten carbon fiber, we've gotten RTV pavers, we've even had centered regolith. So what we've done is we've taken the first set of different kinds of coupons that NASA thinks is a great potential for future landing pads and we're putting them in real situations. So we are putting them on representative dirt and shooting them with rockets and we're seeing what kind of things are good and what kind of things aren't working. When we actually do put landing pads on the moon, we're gonna have a much better idea faster than if we just tried to model everything. One, two, three, up. Watch, Watch your fingers. Watch the digits. I was the program manager for this project and the test conductor. So we are not planning to have any lag time on this test over the coupons. We just want it to shut off right when it reaches its bottom point. Leading up to testing, you know, there's been months of preparation and design work, but on an actual test day, you know, we get into the shop bright and early, we load up the truck with everything that we need, we get to go out to the test site and put the finishing touches on a test site. Usually that means plugging in wires, you know, making sure that we can connect all of the computers to the right thing. Increase regulated pressure to 750 PSI. We make sure the engine is and the hardware is all inspected. Uh, we start with visual inspections and then we roll into electrical inspections and then we do have the movable test stand. We'll also raise and lower that a couple times and verify that's all functioning as intended before rolling into an actual engine test. The manual's here. That's good. I start getting nervous about when I ask safety if they're ready to move into engine test operations. And that's when I get like, I feel a little bit jittery and excited. It'll be the first time we bring this thing up to full, full thrust, so that's always a risk. It's either about to work or we're about to hear some fire and flame. And then I get to call to safety and ask if they're ready to move into engine test operations. And then I'll do my, my final clearing. Safety, clear the area. Then I get to do a countdown and hit fire. Test in six, five, four, three, two, one. So this test went fantastic. It was one of the first times we'd ever had to drop the lift and it dropped great, did exactly what we want, essentially the first time and it had been eight months of prep work for that test. It was really, really rewarding. Testing was uh, really successful. We learned a lot and we tested a lot of different samples in fairly relevant conditions with the falling rocket engine simulating a landing. 
going forward in the future, this technology, particularly for landing pads and even some of the things we tested for our, our partners at NASA, they're going forward into other programs. So this iterative learning process is in full swing as we push towards landing on the moon in the mid-2020s. And we are very, very grateful that we can be a part of making that happen.